I think uh, one of the things that is hardly acknowledged is that uh, Road and Belt Initiative passes through 39 African countries. That is over two thirds of the continent. Secondly, Africa has got something around 150 billion infrastructure deficit. So when China comes uh, to, 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 the, to the African shows, and all these countries are different, there are over 50 countries. So what China offers is it meets a demand now. No, it's not history. It's not in the future. It's a demand that is now. Are there challenges? Are there different ways of doing it? Yeah. But I think a lot of the time when Western commentators uh, 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 talk about Africa and China relationship, it, it, it is, it is uh, 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 framed as uh, a zero sum game. What they lose, uh, China gains. When in reality, both can be on the continent providing different services and be able to uh, continue serving the same. But I think that the, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the road uh, um, initiative really helps in cementing China as a preeminent player on the continent now and going into the future.